Hello, welcome to RPG. No. <laughs> God, this is like a blooper reel. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> hello, welcome to Drinks and Discussions, the RPG podcast, uh, otherwise known as Dirty. Uh, right here on the Twitch channel, we are also streaming to YouTube, which I'm just remembering I need to have the YouTube uh, channel up so that way I can see YouTube comments. You know what? I'll work on that in just a minute. What I want to do is I want to introduce you guys to the TT or not to TTRPGs to Dirty. So basically, what it is is a bunch of us, kind of whoever shows up. Really, I've got a bunch of different co-hosts, but as of like uh, the last, I don't know, friggin' thirty episodes, it's literally just been us three. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you can see we're very professional in what we do. Um, but uh, we show up and we just kind of discuss things related to RPGs and TTRPGs, that being role-playing games and tabletop role-playing games. For example, that would be like Skyrim and D&D. Um, just for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, that basically sums up the gist of it. With that, I have my co-host today, which is uh, Mr. Pickles. He is the... Uh... Yep. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> screaming of little children. Screaming little children. Yeah. That's like his theme music, like WWE. He's walking out and there's just screaming children. <laughs> that feels insulting. That's <laughs> sure. Um, Mr. Sprinkles is the voice actor behind the hit character named Grunkle from the uh, show King's Crossing. He's also the uh, renowned storyteller between behind the show, The Strange Town, Golden Ridge. Um, those shows are both aired here on the channel and on the YouTube channel, so hopefully you guys are able to catch those. The full series are out. Uh, you can find them on the YouTube channel. We also have... Uh, oh, he's also the voice of Morgan. How dare I forget? Uh, yep. Thank you for my theme song. Yeah, <laughs> Morgan! <laughs> he's also the voice of Morgan. Um, f flame farter. Um, yeah. from, <laughs> the, yeah. from, uh, the dirty journey, another show we have here actually on this podcast. Um, but in the other seat, we have a Deese. Now Deese is the voice actor behind the character known as Adareg. Adareg is Adareg Nimblehole. I'm pretty sure I have to go through and double check, but I'm pretty sure it's Adareg Nimblehole. And, um, that is from the show King's Crossing as well. Um, what other characters do you do? I think that basically sums up your characters for what's shown on stream. However, he is also the storyteller and the creative genius behind the show that is The Dirty Journey, shown here on the, uh, on the podcast. So hopefully you guys are able to catch that. You just have to go through and watch every episode of the podcast to find it. Good luck. You'll find it. Uh, <laughs> it's in there and it's worth it. Um... And lastly, that leaves me. I'm Wrath. Uh, I will be your daddy tonight. And basically, uh, <laughs> Pickle's face. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just made my intro to the ARC series, and I just thought it was... I said it the first time, and I was like, that's so dumb. I hate it. And now I've said it every time since. And so I just figured I'd bring it to this. <laughs> I accept this father. <laughs> I accept this. Um, basically, I'm the uh, the mind behind King's Crossing. I am the storyteller of that series. Uh, I'm also the voice actor behind the characters Kingsman from The Strange Town Golden Ridge and also Solomon from The Dirty Journey. Um, so that's about it on who we are and what we do. Uh, I'm going to pitch it over to Mr. Pickles to tell us what our topic is for today. And the reason I'm doing it is not to put Mr. Pickles on the spot like he thinks it is. It's so that I can pull up the chats. <laughs> You're buying me time. Uh, oh, no. What am I going to do? Okay. So we are following like the second part of our journey through how you make an adventure. Um, our first session um, two weeks ago. I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, it might not be exactly that, but um, a while back we did um, an episode where we talked about our inspirations, where I believe you start as a storyteller, you get your inspirations, and then you decide, I'm going to write a story. And uh, so this is that part, is where do you start with a story? Um, I had sent it to everybody as the question yesterday, is what is your writing process? But I, I think you could sum it up as where do you start? Um, to just throw this off. And like last time, I think I really want to hear Adisa's, uh like unsullied opinion or, or your, your, your mentality <laughs> on this, but feel free to override me. Yeah, I do too. 
and I'm going to let I'm I'm gonna let you speak, but first, um, <laughs> um, that's a throwback to something somewhere. Um, Kanye. Yeah, it was Kanye. Thank you. Wow, pickles. Um, on point. <laughs> actually, of everyone, out of everyone here, you would know that. <laughs> when we talked to, in the previous episode, pickles said music was his muse. So, um. So <laughs> I think what was that? Am I allowed to say what you what you said, told me afterwards? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> afterwards, he hit me up and he was like, "I shouldn't have said that. I sound like such a stoner." <laughs> I think I said that was the most stoner ass thing I could possibly say. Like, yo, man, like music. music. I just feel the vibes. And I get the story. Like, I, yeah, it's like, oh, god. I think that's what it was when you were describing it. You're like, you ever just listen to music and you can like hear the story? And I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> Yikes. And you, you're not helping your case with the evaluation of Evil Bong as a topic of discussion. <laughs> I'm not even wearing my Evil Bong shirt here. <laughs> More on that later. We'll talk about our sponsors. Um, in the meantime, before I, before I let you dive in, the reason I wanted to jump in is because this is actually a topic that I have tried I pried and tried to ask people like, because when I was coming up with like King's Crossing and all my previous campaigns, like, where do you start? Like, how do I like document my notes and like keep track of everything? Do you come up with the plot first? Do you come up with the big bad first? Do you come up with the character concepts first? Do you come up with the setting first? Like, and, and where do you go from there? Like, how do you keep it all in order? I think I asked Pickles this and he goes, I use Evernote. And I was like, that doesn't help. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know the format for like, and I Google use Evernote. Yeah, I Googled and like, I was like, you know, what is the, like the format for this? Nothing. Like, I'm sure there's probably something out there, but I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find stuff. And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to wing it and figure it out myself. And thankfully it kind of worked. Um, but I am curious, like Pickles, Adisa's story, because you're the most recent coming up with the story. Pickles and I, uh, I came up with King's Crossing a while ago. I'm still coming up with it in writing. Pickles came up with Strange Town Golden Ridge even before that. Um, your most recent on the writer's block, not writer's block, but on the writer's table. Yeah, writer's table. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to pitch it over to Adis, like, like Pickle said. Yeah, so I would say probably the biggest thing for me is with being new to all of this, I definitely started from a baseline of... I'm going to take a concept that I can uh, that works uh, with uh, taking the Applejack story that uh, Pickles started us off with, oh, yeah. um, taking that world and kind of trying to expand upon it rather than trying to create something from scratch. So I kind of took the cheater's way out on that one. Um, but I've kind of tried to emulate some of the other uh, things that I like about some of the other stories that I've heard uh, along the way. Cause I mean, I've been a fan of uh, TTRPG podcasts and shows for a while, uh, but uh, it's always been from the listener's perspective, never from the player or DM's perspective. Um, so getting that initial jump start with a already pre-built kind of, a starting location at least uh, I've been able to build off of that. And usually it's just been kind of passing thoughts of like, Oh, that would be cool to tie into here, write it down and then try to incorporate it into uh, character notes later on. Um, and to do that, I have a, I usually just use just pen and paper uh, notebook uh, to with one sheet of uh, just a general I wouldn't say map, but, but more of like a storyboard of like main points and main things that I want to hit on in a uh, in a session or a campaign, and then tying it together uh, and giving events to tie things together uh, along. Uh, in mine is very linear in that it is traveling down a road, so uh, it really is linear <laughs> here <yeah>. to here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that gives me a good ending point as well, because now um, I have a firm solid of like, all right, once they get to the end of the road and they deliver their passengers, that's going to be the end of the campaign. And then I can wrap all and then I try to wrap up most of my 
main story plots within that section uh, and kind of keep a cap on it at either end that way. But in the middle, it's open to interpretation. And so far, there've, I've already had a couple of instances where uh, character interactions have driven me to rethink some ways that I've tied in story characters and story arcs. So what you're saying is we've messed up your game? No. <laughs> Just like, you've, um, enhanced. you've modified it. Yeah, modified. Yeah, yeah that's the word for it. I've, I've had instances like that where I had something <laughs> written a different way and a player comes up with something either that breaks what I was doing and makes it like apparent to me that, oh, that was a stupid idea to begin with. Let's fix that. Or they come up with a way better idea, and I'm like, that's what I come up with. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's... Me. I wrote that. I, I wrote I that. Take. <laughs> yeah. I've so, definitely mentioned I've done that in King's Crossing, where I'm like, <laughs> using that... <laughs> I think I'm, I'm pretty open about it. You guys will come up, and at the end, I'm like, I love it. Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some pretty good moments like that. Um... So we know um, from previous discussions uh, how you kind of came up with the inspiration for the, di- the di- for the dirty journey. Um, but I guess like, I mean, what was the first thing you like wrote? Like what was the, what was the, was it the concept? Was it like that? So the- like, what, what was like, I mean, when you're sitting there looking at a blank sheet, you have an idea, you have the inspiration of what you want to do. Where do you go from there? Yeah, so the first thing that I started with was uh, taking a, uh, trying to create a concept that would be uh, interesting to my players. And the first draft that I had with that was this idea of the transport, this this cart. Um, and uh so from that, I was able to kind of start that as the center of my web and then draw out from there, all right, what are the things that this cart would be doing and all this. And eventually I got to the point where I had to kind of go back. Uh, but that's just like the starting point of where I started with it. But uh, I then had to go back after uh, after bringing it up and getting challenged uh, a couple times, uh, it which is part of the creative writing process is like showing your ideas to others and getting cr- uh, constructive criticism on what you can do better or what uh, is working, what isn't. For anyone that. who didn't see that episode, Pickle said, fuck you. Fuck that idea. I, I didn't mean to. <laughs> it just slipped out. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um, no, I, I think he's talking about when he came up with the idea and we pushed like, he was like, oh, I want to do a traveling campaign. We're like, okay, but why are we traveling? What is yeah. the, like, we, we push for more information. Mm-hmm. It helps drive yeah, it, the old brain. Yeah, and it, it helped to open up the thought processes of, all right, what's keeping them on the road? Why are they staying on the road? Why do they need to be on the road? Uh, and that's kind of driven some of the other things out of that. But as a starting point, I started with, all right, what, how do I want to, how do I want to tell this story? And starting with, all right, the way that I'm going to tell this story is through a, uh, a movable base essentially. So, yeah. So it really came down to the focal point. First thing you really put your, your heart into of what you were going to work on was the mode of transportation, the, Mm -hmm. the center around which the story takes place. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that leaves two of us. <laughs> yeah, do you want to save two. Psycho for last, or do you want to... <laughs> Psycho. Uh, here, we'll rock, paper, scissors. Last. You ready? Um, okay. Um, rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Oh, oh, that's a scissors. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, go call rock. it. Uh, wait, wait uh-huh. hold on, hold on. Oh, let's do it at the same time. Let's okay. not. Uh-huh. This is weird. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Wait, you can't. <laughs> you changed it. All right, I'll let you win. All right, you no, won. You go. Do you want to go first My- or second? I want you to go. Okay. Um, I will go next. <laughs> that was so botched. Um, you can tell we it's rehearsed that. You're coming in after me. I'm like, are we started? Are, are we? St- I'm going to do scissors <laughs> no matter what. 
That's my strategy. <laughs> I always do scissors, and that pisses me off that you did the same to start with. I didn't know. I, I literally, as I was going, I was like, oh, right. I have to think of something to do. Um, no, no, no. Okay, hold on, hold on. Everybody uh -huh. goes rock. That's the instinct. Everybody goes rock because that's, like, the straightforward, the reasonable rock, paper. You think they're going to change. You just do rock. Uh, the, not everybody goes for paper because paper's weak. And so it's just... If not everyone goes for paper because it's weak, why do you go scissors? If everyone, if everyone acting. goes rock, you should be going paper. Yeah, but I didn't you're think just, this out. You're just trying to lose. <laughs> Anywho, um, okay, so for me, mine was, okay. Well, first off, I did mine wrong. Because um, I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm going to work on this. And I worked on the deities. <laughs> Why would you start with the deities? The answer is you wouldn't. Um, <laughs> Unless your game is specifically about the deities, mine is not. You know how many of my players in the span of 30 episodes of King's Crossing have engaged in the deities? They've engaged with one deity, and it was for like one episode. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, two deities, actually. Uh, you guys mauled a, a, an altar. Um, Hell yeah, we did. <laughs> I love pickles. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I started with the DDs, and I was really, it was a really rough concept, and I, I don't remember doing it. What I remember is later on, once I was already working on King's Crossing, we went in to detail the DDs, and I pulled up my original notes from way back when, and I looked at them, and I was like, these are all ass. <laughs> I was like, I gotta redo all of these DDs because they were terrible. Um but apparently deities was the first thing that I worked on, but it doesn't really count. So what I did is I pulled from previous experience. I've had one really good campaign in my history called Stonehelm. Um, people talk fondly of it. I have a terrible mem memory, so I don't remember everything of it. But um, I actually had pickles. I was like, can you tell me more about Stonehelm? <laughs> like, her up. Yeah. Um, so... I've had one good campaign it was called Stonehelm and it was basically just the entire campaign was within one city. Like you were within the city of Stonehelm and that was the, everything that happened in the campaign happened in the city. Um, so what I did is with King's Crossing, I said, I'm going to pick one starting location, uh, which now that I'm thinking about it kind of relates to Adisa's start. He said the location our location in your setting is a moving vehicle, but in mine, it was a town in the swamps. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to start with a, a location. Where are they? Because like a Dece, you know, hey, you're on a traveling cart, and then questions can arise. Okay, we're on a traveling cart. Where are we going? Where do we come from? Why are we traveling? You know, who are we traveling with? Who would be on the cart? The cart needs maintenance. It needs parts. It needs supplies. Do we have a supply chain set up? You know, it, it builds the campaign from there. And like you said, it kind of webs out to where, oh, shit, we need all these things. You know, people that are directly associated with it. Places that are directly associated. Events that are directly associated with it. So I started with uh, Arwen's Rest, a... Um, town set in a swamp and so what i did is i was like okay the players are going to be somewhere i want them to be in a small town I, I love the small town vibe start um i love the idea it's a huge thing for me to start in like a struggling area and have the opportunity to build it up or to move on to bigger and better things you know um so my entire concept was small town possibility of building it up a lot of struggle and strife that gives the player characters tons of opportunity to, to like help and and be you know an, an impact whereas if you guys are in you know los angeles you guys are gonna get you know you're not gonna be as big of an impact like if i went to los angeles right now no one would know me no one would care like no one does anything but like there's a starbucks off exit 14 and if I walk in there, everyone looks and they're like, oh, wrath. I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, I'm going to put you guys in a lot smaller of a setting so that you really shine. Um, so that was my entire concept. That's how I started. I was like, okay. And then I was like, okay, why did this town? Actually, this is something I got from Pickles. Why is this town there? Towns become a thing because there's an industry there. There's a, there's a purpose to them. 
And so I thought, okay, why are they, why are they there? And I was like, dude, it would be cool if it was in a swamp. We never do anything in a swamp. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in a swamp. And in Ark Survival Evolved, the original, um, the swamp was the worst place I'd ever been in my life. It terrified me and everything there sucked. <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> that would be an epic place to have superheroes. What superhero movies do you know where they're in a swamp? Avatar? The Last Airbender, he goes to a swamp. That's the only one I can think of. Might be more classified as a jungle, but that might be splitting hairs. Okay. There might have been a swampy scene. Oh, you're talking about an avatar? Oh, shoot. Are we talking? You're talking Avatar, about the, the Last Airbender. Oh, okay. My yeah, bad. not, My not bad. the blue aliens. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, I was like, you know, I want them to be in a swamp. I think it just is is a new creative idea that hasn't, you know, we haven't done here. And I think it would be really fun to explore. And then I thought, okay, why is there a town in the middle of the swamps? And that blew up. Now we've got ancient ruins. There's a whole like ancient civilization. This used to be like some giant city. Why was there a giant city in the middle of all these ruins or in the middle of the swamp? And that just built a story around it. So now the entire first season of King's Crossing, you guys are exploring this, you know, swamp area. And I get to, you know, it's built an entire season of my game just based on why is this town here? Mm -hmm. So that's I very similar to Adidas. I wish I could say I did something different, but location and it expanded from there. Now, granted, there were other things that factored in. I had things like, and this hasn't, Come with the spoiler alert for anyone watching. Not you guys. You guys are already aware of this. But for any of the viewers, here's a spoiler for King's Crossing. I wanted my adventurers. Now, granted, we're, we're in a grim and perilous system, a grim and perilous setting where everything sucks. The common people die a lot. You know, there's, you know, you get dysentery, you're dead, right? It's that kind of setting. Um, I wanted my adventurers to be heroes so like how we would see the avengers the common people would see grunkle you know they're like holy shit like this guy's able to survive like going out of town like he didn't need the town guards like oh my god he came back alive with food what the hell like give it up for this dude like this guy's amazing um he took and, a lot of food out but he, brought some <laughs> he did yeah he did take a lot of food out um but that's a good point, actually. Um, yeah. I'll have to make sure I correct that in the game where they all start booing you. No, 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 no. I gave for that food, though. <laughs> yeah, you said I gave them a big influx you of did. money. Yeah, you did. They're like, I hope he comes back with more food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the idea was that I wanted you guys to be heroes, to be really stand out once you guys get to that point. Granted, for anyone watching, they're not at that point yet. They're basically just crazy people who are like we're gonna go out in the swamp and people are like that's crazy <laughs> and then like they wow. came back that's wild <laughs> um <laughs> but spoiler alert, there's a point where they're gonna become heroes and i put an emphasis on that because um i really wanted to explore having abilities being unique in that regard and being more special than you know normal people and why do they get powers? Why do they get these abilities? You know, um, how does that come around? So that provided me tons of content to write as well. And I get that whole section. So not only do I have the town and everything that's available there, and now I have this other plot story that we can explore. So now I've got two full plot stories we can explore. The freelance and everything that's available in there, like why, what's big? What's going on? What are the events? And then, oh, hey, also these things are going to happen. They're going to get all these powers and they're going to get, you know, become heroes. So now I've got two full plots that my players can go down, whichever one they choose. You know, if they want to go explore this, they can go explore this. If they want to go explore this, they can go explore that. Um, and then it, other things, you know, once I got my characters, my players, they came up with their own stories. They have their own things going on. So now I've got three different. Someone's ringing my doorbell and no dog's in a bowl. <laughs> wow, increasing volume. Very skillful. <laughs> Anywho. You're um, just barking from the bed there and like slowly turning to you? No, it's not Kira. Like it. Kira doesn't bark. 
No, she was being chill. Say, she's really just I saw Kira chilling. moving behind you. I'm like, it's getting louder, and she's moving towards you. Is she like barking? Not Kira. <laughs> the man. barking is like moving towards the mic. Not Kira, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm bothered. Um, but anyway, so it just kind of developed to where I started out with this, and now I've got all these different plot hooks that you guys can go down. So it's definitely not a railroad campaign, and I think it was. In one of the under the tables, we actually talked about, you know, oh, we don't have a merchant. And I was like, well, you didn't explore that avenue. Like, you don't know why you don't have a merchant because you guys never looked into it. And you're like, because I'm not going to force feed it. You've got all these different things you could explore. That was one of the things you could have explored. You did. They did. And you guys went on a wild ride with that one. Uh, yeah. a, a decent nimwort. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of how my writing took and flourished and just kind of blew up into into something um started with the place and expanded from there mm -hmm. over to you pickles your turn uh the man the madman behind the magic of uh strange town golden ridge oh strange town of golden ridge how did i make this <laughs> <laughs> um okay so I used to have a very similar method to you guys there, um, but I also tended to run more sandbox games. And with the idea of a sandbox is it's just you're doing different things and it could build to something. But my issue was that none of my games ever ended on like a climactic something happening. Um, so in my process, I'm very strict. I've been told by people I've shared this like method with. Um, and I'm very oriented towards the ending of the campaign more than anything when I'm creating something. So so how I start is I just pull up Evernote because I'm not sponsored by them, but I love Evernote. Um, the idea is that you can make um, different notebooks that have different pages in them, um, and then you can stack in different ways so that you can have your campaign stack of notebooks and then a notebook about what's going on in your current adventure and your NPCs and your PCs and your workbook and, and all that stuff. So, just method of organizing really you could do that probably with google docs or whatever um but so i start out i have an idea i want to make a game i want it to be something generally like a genre like i'm like i want to do something scary modern horror stuff what do i want to do and my rule is if you come up with an idea for a campaign like that you need to just write down 20 ideas if you cannot write down 20 ideas you don't have a campaign just throw that idea in the trash and so what I mean by ideas is like, okay, so I want to have, um, I want to have like a, a vampire, but a very uh, positive vampire, a character that is seen in a positive light by the players is more of a victim of his own curse than anything. I want to have that. That's an idea. Uh, another idea is, you know, I want to have a giant monster chasing after players, trying to grab their truck as people are shooting off of it, because I think that'd be fun. That kind of thing. And I just go through the list of, it doesn't have to be complete ideas. It just has to be a idea, like a monster, a location, a scene. Do I want to have like an abandoned farmhouse as a setting to have my players potentially do a shootout or, uh, you know, anything? Um, do I want to have monsters invade that? Do I want to do a killing floor, um, the farmhouse level, where things are swarming towards that barn, like that, that they're fortified sort of? That, that can would be, cool. be terrifying. Yeah, and so I just go from there. 20 ideas, it does not matter how they fit together, just 20 ideas of things I want to do. And then from there, I sort of think of, so what could this all lead to? What's the common theme in my ideas here? What could I point stuff towards? Huh. And I like to call on Lord of the Rings and Star Wars here because both of these have a definitive in the original trilogies they def have a definitive climactic scene that the entire story is building up to lord of the rings in case you're not familiar wrath um lord of the rings has an entire journey dedicated to getting this ring of magic to a volcano to throw it the fuck in and have it die oilers <laughs> wow spoilers okay, yeah oh. oh you spoiled lord of the rings for me that's funny uh hey for anyone watching the spoilers uh heads up <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give you star wars spoilers in a minute too anyways <laughs> uh, okay so Next but the entire you know, plot is the luke's dad is bigger <laughs> i was but um pretty sure there's incest at some me. point no, but Lord of the Rings, everything builds up to that point. 
the background of the setting of, oh, the guy has the ring and he gets his hand chopped off and a human grabs it and is about to throw it over. But the elf says, are you going to throw it over? And the guy says, no. Ding. So it's all building up. You know, his his Bilbo Baggins has the ring and it's a familial thing with the, the background prequel. There's an entire story built on the one scene of Frodo. Are you going to throw the ring or not? Star Wars. Spoiler, he says no. Star Wars has a similar thing of just a climactic scene where you've seen Luke Skywalker go through some trauma. You've seen his parents. They're actually aunt and uncle, whatever. They don't, I don't care about their names. Aunt Beru or whatever. They die. Spoiler. And, and then he goes through this long quest of going through a rebellion. You have the, the battle at Hoth, the, the beautiful snowy planet where bad things happen. You have him go to that final scene. Shout out to Star Wars Battlefront, man. That game was great game as a fun level but you, you go to that final scene where he has his lightsaber out it's green he, he's got his black attire he hasn't worn that before is he going to the dark side you don't know and he goes against emperor Palpatine <laughs> you don't know and his father darth father darth his vader is german for father anyways and, and so you have that final scene of the choices like obviously luke gets his butt throttled there by the emperor and darth father is like he has the choice. Do I save my son or do I pledge loyalty to the cause that I'm believing in? And so every campaign there has that critical like scene where there's a choice being made. And so after I have a bunch of ideas, I have to think about like what is that choice in the end? Do you uh, save the world or start anew with the knowledge that you'll be empowered in that new world? You'll be an emperor in this new world. Do you <coughs> trust them? To, to fulfill that favor that kind of thing like i always think of like excuse you <laughs> I, just, I, just I don't know what that like was that. <laughs> you're like oh he did say lord of the rings many I, times i i was gonna say something and then i just coughed on myself i don't know why <laughs> I, I but so that that's choked. really like my point is like i i get 20 ideas i try and find a common point that they could all point to what are we building up to i define that scene and then i go back through the campaign and start working things out uh, I want to say, if I haven't already, this is a very, like, non-sandbox approach. This is saying I was there say, is a story to be told. I and love... this does not fit with sandbox stuff, which would have, like, an open... Because mm -hmm. I love that story. idea, and I wish I could do that, because I feel like there would be so much more structure. If I knew the climactic ending of King's Crossing, and I could, like, I knew kind of the building blocks to get to that point... There would be so much more structure, but in King's Crossing, it's such an open world sandbox that it, even I'm like, I don't know how this is going to end. This is going to, like, I, I have an idea of, you know, I know what I'm, you know, what we're building up to in season one. I know what we're building up to and what we're going towards. I have no idea how it's going to come about. I don't know how it's going to go, and I don't know how it's going to end because it's a sandbox game. That's the whole point. We're all kind of figuring it out together. We're all going to be very surprised when we see the finale episode. <laughs> no, we're all going to be like, whoa, didn't see that one coming. Um, and it's very different. But I like your style because I think, it, I think it's a, a, a better style in that I prefer structure and I prefer organization and all that. So I think that would really work. However, I prefer a sandbox game when I'm DMing. And so those two things do not work. You know, it, yeah. if I tried to write King's Cross in the way you wrote Strange Giant Golden Ridge, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same game. And that, that, that's really the point I want to make is if you're making a sandbox game, you have people moving the background. Mm -hmm. um, it's the my ghost. method, yeah, my method really doesn't make a lot of sense. You can still do a sandbox game where there are quests open and you're building towards something. Um, a game we've both played Wrath. I don't know if you have a Deese. Um, uh, shoot, what is it? It's the mercenary game where you're wobbling around, turn-based mercenary game. You're building a mercenary band. Oh, uh, band um, of, uh, Battle Brothers. Battle Brothers, suspect. yep. Battle Brothers. Oh. Yeah, Battle Brothers fits that a lot. There's a couple that different styles is... of that game. There's a couple of different ones out there. War Tales, I think, is another one. But yeah, I get the idea. Yeah. It's like a sandbox game in the sense that you can go to any town and do any quest you want. But the game decides early on that you get like a randomly rolled invasion of sorts. Like at a certain point, skeletons are going to invade because there's a necromancer army. At some point, there will be a goblin horde, that kind of thing. And I thought that was really interesting because you could do that with a sandbox and say, I'm putting you on a timer. You've got these different quests you can do. 
I'm intentionally making it so you make choices. You can do three out of five quests before the timers run out. You know that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, That's and, like a and, mix. Like, if if Adis, like Adis did the same style as me when writing, but if he had done something similar to yours, it would look more like that, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm mostly saying there there's a mix you could do that mm -hmm. um, is plausible, but um, for the most part, with my style, with doing uh, modern horror games, of course, having an ending is good. You you want to know when things end and when the pain stops for your players because, yeah, horror games. <laughs> and I think, especially in the you know, in a horror game, I mean, you can't just go on forever. The whole point is that it's building up to something. Unless you become like more of an action horror where it's like we're Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. We're yeah, kicking ass so. instead of getting scared i think the problem because i mean this is going to be what do they call that hot take or something where it's i have something that i have an opinion that other people aren't going to agree with oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a hot, hot pickle, you hot pickle well. yeah um hot pickle. uh supernatural a tv show that went on for like forty thousand oh. seasons too long um i think that was their problem I think if they would have gone like three seasons and they had something they were they were building up to and there was a big moment and it was climactic and it would have been wonderful. They went on for like 15 seasons and you know how much of that I watched? Not 15 seasons worth. I got so bored and tired out that I was like, you guys aren't building up to anything. It's just on and on and on. Like, what, what's the point? Mm -hmm. and, power uh, creep. You're seeing power creep is the problem because I've seen a fair amount of that. And um, I think the shows like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, they, they suffer from the same problem is if you do monster of the week, you have to keep upping the danger. Otherwise the same issue isn't there. If it's just like, Oh, now we're fighting wolves this week. Bam. <laughs> I'm Goku. <Right. laughs> Kick butt. Yeah. Against wolves. But so like you have to keep upping the narrative. And um, I think that becomes problematic. Whereas if you know, there is a definitive end, <laughs> then you can control that more. But um I, I don't know. A different storyteller systems are better at different things like that. Like D and D, there's a lot more room to do that one through twenty. Whereas Savage Worlds has, I think it's novice through legendary, which is a shorter track. Um, and some systems like Savage Pickles just don't even have anything planned our, out. Our progression system is more. <laughs> Um, but it makes me think another example is uh, Ghost Whisperer a uh, show a lot of people probably haven't seen but I watched it at some point for some reason and it was it became I mean after, like you watch and you get through a season and you're like oh this is fun and then you go through the second season and you're sitting there like this is the exact same as the first season and then you get to the third season and you're like every episode is the same thing Every episode is the exact same thing. It's just a different ghost mm -hmm. that they meet every time. It, mm -hmm. What? They say it's a great show. Go watch it. Literally every single episode is the exact same plot. Mm -hmm. Like, word for word. <laughs> yeah. uh, meet a ghost, <laughs> don't know how to handle it, learn how to handle it. It's gone. Meet a ghost, don't know how to handle it, learn how to... It's the exact same thing every time, and there's not like anything new or anything different. And... I feel like that's mm -hmm. the problem with horror. You, it's gotta be, it's gotta have a climax. I mean, yeah, I was about to bring up Pokemon, which isn't a horror at all. But I mean, Pokemon <laughs> went on for friggin' ever, and you know, you get bored and tired. But I'll tell you right now, like I gave up on Pokemon. I moved on. They mm -hmm. wrapped it up, and you know, Ash ended his his journey. And you best believe, I tried. I looked. I was like, I want to watch through all of them to get to the end, and I, it's not available. Frick you, Pokemon. Because you don't have mm -hmm. a streaming service that has it available. You have Pokemon TV where there's like three episodes of a season. Who wants to watch that? Sorry, I'm <laughs> triggered. Um, yeah, no, and I, I get that. And honestly, Pokemon was one of those shows that kind of suffered from... They wrapped it up actually in a very nice storyline within like the first three seasons. And then somebody was like we can make this into a weekly thing and just kept pushing it and kept going and now and they like regressed ash's age uh over the show period and what the hell that's one thing i never <laughs> got with pokemon i know a lot of people have discussed this like being 10 years old and going on a journey with dragons that can like burn out of old? town yeah yeah 
I thought they were like 14, and that's no. not better. No, they're 10 years old when they go out on their adventure, and they have a, a Pikachu that can blow up a mountain. Like, yeah. you have nuclear bombs in your pocket, and you're 10 years old, and that's just normal. And they're like, good luck! <laughs> no, it's like, that yeah, never made kids. sense. That's not today's topic, but there's things that trigger me, right? Um, yeah, let's talk Pokemon another day. That, that's <laughs> yeah, another that's day. worth an RPG topic, because that is an RPG. Yeah, and I know you've been wanting to talk games more, so maybe we should table that as... Yeah, we do talk TTRPGs a lot, not so much RPGs, but um, yeah, we'll table it. <laughs> um, it's on the table. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, writing styles and, and stuff. So we have, um, we have the general concept of what what you put to paper first, and I think I like Pickle's idea. It's very different than anything I've done where you take all your like pounding at your head ideas of, man, I really want to do this. You write it down. Really want to do this. Oh man, this would be a really cool idea. And then you put it all together. And how can I? How? What does this make? You know, it's like if you take. Oh, I really want flour. I really want butter. I really want milk. What does it make? And eventually, you you know, you're like, oh, okay, I can I can start making a cake out of this. You know, mm-hmm. um, if I had an egg here, and a yeah, of vanilla here, yep. Yeah. Analogies. Oh. We're great. Watch this. Yeah. Watch the show, man. Subscribe for more. Uh, um, and on next episode, baking with a D. Baking with a D. <laughs> um, bacon D. Like bacon grease, but bacon a D. Bacon D. Bacon D. Bacon D. I don't know. Um, it's just a new video of like a cookie sheet with D. Sixes on <laughs> coming out of the oven. Yo, merch. You guys want to buy? D6 Bacon cookies? D6. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a what do they call them where you sell cookies? Bake uh, sale. Bake sale. Bake sale. We'll do a bake sale for the <laughs> channel. We got to raise funds, man. We go completely <laughs> unfunded. I fund all of this. You're welcome. Um, anywho. See, a lot of my questions that I put so in the chat tonight. now don't make much sense. Um, the questions you put in chat? No, no, in our group chat, the Battle Buddies. Like, um, oh, because I, I initially put the what is your writing process, and then I added a lot more. And after hearing what you guys have said, um, it's kind of like, well, that doesn't really apply. Like, um, wh- how much do you write before you decide your adventure is done? If you're writing a five adventure campaign that you've decided will be five adventures long, mm-hmm. that that that's. Well, see yeah. that there we we differ. I don't do a five adventure, you know. Um, exactly. But what that, I will that's say what is, I'm saying. it doesn't make sense now. Well, now I'm thinking about it. For season one, I know season one is done when we get to that climactic scene that I have in my head. Oh. So that kind of does tie back to what you were saying. Like you want that climactic scene. Um, I know season one is going to wrap up when we get to that point. When we get to that point, it's kind of up to you guys, what you guys do, how you guys, you know, what you focus, what you guys choose to go after. If you guys don't choose to go after it for a while, it's going to take longer to wrap up, excuse me, season one. Um, so that, does that kind of help answer that question for you, for my? Yeah, it's style. like if we go to a casino um, while we're on a mission, it, like, it, we're not actually progressing further, so it could go differently. <laughs> I feel called out. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, season one of uh, Strange Shot Golden Ridge unaired because uh, I suck and I didn't post it. Um, and it's gone forever now. Um, season one of Strange Shot Golden Ridge uh, started out with, hey, here's all your plots. What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't have money for coffee. I'm going to go rob a casino. And he's like, what? No, you, didn't, you didn't go out there robbing a casino first off. It's and true. you wanted <laughs> wanted money for snacks, and I didn't know that because I was just like, you guys have like money. You don't need to pay for snacks. You can make sense snacks. in my I head. Do that. Um, but you had an elaborate <laughs> plan that you went in, tried to earn money reasonably at a casino, and then ended up robbing. Chips. It didn't go well. You still have. Yeah, I still have those chips. Um, but <laughs> well, then because afterwards um, I found out I had money for coffee, and I was like, oh, <laughs> so now I just have these stolen casino chips. <laughs> I, I think, um, I, I don't know. I, I can go for about another 20 minutes or so, uh, but I don't know if we wanted to wrap it up here. Um, no, I mean, we're, we're right at the top of the hour. Do you, I mean, I'll, does anyone have anything they want to add? I, I do have more that I want to add. I just, All right, uh, then I we have more things we want to add. Um, so, well, chat, we're going to keep going. You know what, chat, if you guys keep asking questions, we keep talking. Win-win. 
Well, no, I had I had a plan here. Never uh, mind, speaking... chat. Fuck you. Shut up. <laughs> I don't actually mean that. That one slipped out. <laughs> Anyways, so like in the writing process, then as you go further into it, um, like I have a very simple method of writing adventures. And if you're wondering why my or the cameras turn around, it's because my wife's home and the shower's right next to me. So you, you guys know the drill. Anyways, um, so when I write an adventure, as I've said in under the table episodes, um, like I literally just write three general critical points of the storyline and then a fistful, maybe two fistfuls of, uh, of like clues that could go anywhere. And so that's my general process of writing an adventure is like, I give the three main plot points and a bunch of clues that could go anywhere and see what players do because players will do what they want to do. I feel like um, that's so much better than my method. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, and that's, that's what I learned from Inwells actually. Like he's the one who taught me. Yeah. You don't actually have to have clues be where they would most logically be. You can just have them be where the player is like, I want to look in the pockets of this person's coat in their coat closet. It's like, Oh my God, you're such a genius. You can say, <laughs> you just have, I to put find. the clue in the pocket and you pulled it right on out. Okay. Um, and it's, it's an, it's sort of like simplifying how you tell a story is you want players to find clues. You don't want them to miss them because that's not really fun for them. It's not fun for you. They look dumb. You feel dumb. Uh, I, I, I know that that's why I learned my lesson and I got frustrated <laughs> hey! with my clues not land. You guys be careful about my dad. Shut up, Dibs. His name is Atlas. Shut up, Dibs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that's the problem of, of having a known liar tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't lied about um, anything. Like a wizard. Um, he lied for yeah, you guys. Well, actually, that is true. Yeah. We didn't want him yeah. to tell the truth. <laughs> right. you, you need to be a liar. <laughs> a liar unless it's to us when we want you to, but lie when we want you to to us. <laughs> oh, dude, that's always going to be like a sore spot between Pickles <laughs> What's funny is I'm um, more mad about it than I think Nimwert and, and uh, Adarag were, except Dibs was their friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we were we were upset when we found out. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was completely conveyed because Adarag and Nimwert still didn't know who the what was the son uh, the the sons uh, the lost sons the lost sons. Yep. They they still didn't know what the lost yeah. sons were at the end of the uh mm -hmm. towards the end of the episode. So we uh even after we... even after they came into town, you panicked everyone, set off all the town alarms. They still didn't tell you who the lost sons were. <laughs> yeah. They're like, "No, it's fine." <laughs> just shush. <laughs> it's fine. There's yeah. was That's crazy exactly what happened. They were just like, "Shh." shh, shh. Well, that's the thing about Stutterfuge is you can't just like you can't just admit it to people out loud. Like the ca the captain of the guard is around. You're like, yeah. So we're harboring an illegal wizard, <laughs> and um, yeah, we didn't want you to <laughs> really like uh, draw their attention to us. Yeah. I scream. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, you, like it's the sort of thing where sometimes you have to say, oh, just trust me on it. No, shut up. This isn't about King's Crossing. Um, <laughs> I would get yeah, off topic so my question, what, like I was giving my own yeah. approach to writing an adventure, is mm -hmm. I do my three plot points, That's I add was, a bunch yeah. of clues. How do you guys approach? Not um, like that. And this might be flawed because you guys are doing more sandboxy, uh, more experimental styles for your your own what you're doing. But um, like, yeah, what, what is your method of? Okay, I'm writing an adventure. I'm duh, 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 duh. again. I'm curious about Adisa's, but. I'm going to say mine because mine is polar opposite of yours. Yours is I have this and like we're, we roll from there. Mine is, okay, who's in town? Who would be in this area at the time that they can interact with? What's going on in their lives that they could possibly come up with? Okay, so they, they could go to within town. They probably could go to maybe one of these five places. Okay, let's just focus on those five places. Who would be in each one of those places around that time? To make it make sense you know what based on those npcs their daily lives what i know of them okay so within those five places you've got we'll say three mps each that gives me 15 
Yeah, that gives me 15. <laughs> that was way hard math. math. Um, it gives me 15 NPCs that they could interact with at the time. Okay, within those 15 NPCs, who has plot hooks, who has quests, who has, you know, different stuff that they can interact with during that time? Um, and then not only that, but then what actual other events, you know, oh, the twigs and debris that's coming into town and, you know, that you guys haven't acknowledged um, as the town is actively sinking. Um, one of them bit of my nose. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. One of your party, do you remember which which one of your party was it that went into Hobbs Lodge, went into the downstairs area and saw that it was like mud was up to your knees? Uh, Torvekic. Yeah, like it was, since you I guys had care. been there, it, it'd come up. <laughs> that wasn't in the description for... Uh, it wasn't in the I... beginning. It was you guys yeah. got there, and oh. then afterwards you guys went back there at one point, and mm. the mud was like like where you would lay on your cot. The cots mm -hmm. were getting like, the mud was over the cots and stuff. Not Torbeckic then, actually. I Ours were back. flipped up. Excuse me. Yeah, yours, yours were flipped over with a note that no one can read. <laughs> um but yeah there's uh so the events that are going on as well so that's how i write mine and it's so much more work <laughs> especially when i'm like okay you guys could do this 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 or this you know and then you guys are like we're gonna do this and i'm like i didn't prepare for that shit <laughs> um but that's mine completely opposite to yours so i'm curious adiz yeah, so mine is more structured along the lines of I have these key hints uh, along the way that uh, it, that I've set up criteria for um, in the storyline. So kind of like, uh, I don't want to say like time-gated, but um, some of them are like role-gated, I guess. Um, where sometimes the roles that you're getting, you have a chance if you do it well enough to get this clue sort of thing. Um, which so far has not worked out too great. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say, yo, we have thoughts on that. <laughs> I've been loving the game. I feel like we've been getting a lot of very <laughs> subtle clues. Yeah. Um, I, I think I mentioned clue bombing, where you say a bunch of things really quickly and then just kind of move past it, I, I, yeah. expecting your players to be like, huh, that's a lot of fishy information, Mr. Man. Mm -hmm. And you, you just say, huh, fishy what? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know what I said. It's huh. a suspicion. Weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Tuttle's probably cool. <laughs> probably nice yeah, that, that was a, a moment where I was sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, um, this isn't a series. Oh, that should be another topic. Like, have we had done that topic already? Things DMs shouldn't do. Oh, I mean, we could do part two if we've already done it once. <laughs> <laughs> we could um, say the same thing and just call it part two. I think that is a lesson I learned from pickles. It's been a while. Yeah, don't be a shitty DM. Is yeah, the basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But basically, yeah, role gating is tough because it can it can like, hey, to progress the story, I just need to give the players this. Mm -hmm. Hawk, they all failed their roles. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess we don't progress. Like, <laughs> and then yeah, oh. oh, but that but that's really an easy problem to to solve. Like, don't okay, roll gate. You, no, no, no. <laughs> don't you do roll gate because part of the game is rolling. You give the clues you have to give. Mm -hmm. willingly you don't need a role for that because your players are intelligent their characters are intelligent i should say and, and they can like solve problems there's a ghost in your background um, there's a ghost in my background uh it's stand the by. core clues oh yeah uh, I don't know if I should... oh i see a hand oh he's made of flesh no he says i do not have the car insurance I do not have pickles. I don't currently have car insurance. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you were <laughs> You're right. Give me my car insurance forms, and you were going to say, no, I don't have the car insurance. I don't have car insurance. I have motorcycle insurance. I don't have car insurance. Well, I have insurance on my work truck. That's not what this episode's about. Back to what you guys were talking about. Uh, <laughs> roll gating. Oh, no. Yeah, roll gating. Um, like, you give the core clues. Anything you need critically to solve the actual puzzle, 
ignore the green flash. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but I anything optional, I think, could be rule gated. Like, um, you should give players enough information to know what the story is, but then clarification on certain issues should be rule gated. Do you have the proper skill to read the arcane runes that tell you that this goblin, like, encampment in the caves is because they think that they're worshipping a god that will save them? Do you want to have that as something that is a core clue? No. You give that as like a, a bonus, as you know the skill. You might have perception to see that uh, goblins have been setting up an ambush in a certain area, so that you're like, uh-oh, that's, um, that's something we should keep an eye on. Psych. Um, there's goblin. Actually, I didn't mean to say psych. I meant to say, oh, there, there they are. Goblins right there. <laughs> psych, um, but actually real. <laughs> yeah, psych for real. Oh, no, <laughs> you got like psyched, psyched. psyched. <laughs> Roll gating should give you an advantage or clarification, but I believe, yeah, I believe, I would agree that, that the core clues need to be given sort of on like a assumption that your players are playing characters that are heroic or matter. Well, one thing they, they chat matter. just brought up is a good point. They say, you know, if your characters are actively even just trying, like just asking a stranger, hey, have you ever heard of this location? Like give them something to go off of. Like even if, you know, they're asking the wrong question or they're asking it in the wrong way or they're asking the wrong person, give them something like, hey, have you ever heard of this location? That person can be like... Yeah, I think my sister's boyfriend talked about it uh, one time. I kind of just ignored him. He's kind of a weirdo. Uh, he's this uh, librarian at this library. And then they can be like, okay, we're going to go to the library and talk to the library. Like, they got something from it, you know. Um, if, you know, that's a terrible example, but you get the idea. No, no, that's a great example. Thanks. Actually, yeah, I'm say, awesome. You should, <laughs> you should have that as an element of storytelling. If your players are panicking and they're just like, okay, so I don't know who to talk to about this. I'm going to approach the city guard. I've seen it way too many times. This city guard is just like, oh, fuck you. I hate you. Mm -hmm. I'm arresting you because I don't like your face. And it's like, okay. But they're kind of there to help. And, and so I always respect when a, a GM will have city guard be generally helpful. Uh, uh, acknowledging that the players have been generally appropriate with their characters. Um, you know what's interesting is you guys in King's Crossing, you guys haven't gone to the city guard for anything. I Not didn't really. think they existed. Well, they had the Watchmen, it was, um... that's it. Yeah. They don't have city guard, they had the Watchmen. You guys are very familiar with the Watchmen now. Okay, yeah, Adisa yeah, once yeah, got them cool. to arrest Grunkle. Uh huh. Well, <laughs> I went willingly. I didn't. And how was that experience? It was good. I thought, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was really interesting how a lot of people were just ready to fight the guards. <laughs> No, 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 I was willing to tell them the truth because I I trusted that they were fair. Yeah, and, and he brought you into that, the cabin. Like he was a, like, can you just explain what's going on? And you're like, yeah, here. And he was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, okay, so Grunkle's talking about his trauma. Um, let's just <laughs> let him go for a little bit here. And like, he's not killing anybody. He's just he's just a worry wart. And he's got a vent, that's, man. <laughs> if that's your trauma, being worryful, uh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, that, that's like a thing is... You should only have city guard and townsfolk be standoffish and unhelpful if it's something weird and esoteric, or it's something like that's the plot is that the townsfolk are not helpful. Like the character walks in just completely covered in blood. Well, okay, yeah, that that's a different thing. I'm assuming that the players are coming in like, hey, can you help me with any information about the Blood Tongue Gang? And, and, like, reasonably, anybody in that town should be like, oh, God, yeah, I hate them. Or, or they'd be like, uh, you should stay out of trouble and go home. But if it's a Gronkle coming up and talking, they'll be like, yeah, are you joining them or fighting them? And you'd be like, oh, I'm going to take them. them out. Yeah, eating them. He'd be like, I don't know if I can endorse this, but uh, I'm going to tell you about it because, uh, you know, problem solved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like the Shadow over Innsmouth is a good example of the people aren't very helpful, Lovecraft. Uh, the people aren't very helpful because they are part of the problem. If if people mm. in the town that you're investigating are like, I don't know nothing about nothing, that should be a plot point rather than a, I didn't really improv very well. Go for it, Rath. There was one where uh, I went to a place and there was teeth in the apples and a farmer threw a spear through one of us, I think. Yeah, I wasn't a great storyteller back then. 
Oh. <laughs> I never well, it stuck in my head. That's one of those examples where the people were kind of part of the problem, too, weren't they? They were in on it. Oh, actually, yeah. No. Uh, okay. Actually, I wasn't that bad. Yeah, the point was that the, the people in the town were growing a gross fruit with I teeth in it. This. And it's like, that's not something people eat. And everybody was weird and unfriendly. Yeah. Um, and so the See? point was that Good example. a corrupted town. Hero kills crazy people. But I'm pretty uh, sure. Didn't they impale one of us with a spear when we were trying to run away? I don't. No. Isn't that I the one where there that... was a wizard's tower too and we went in and everything was going to shit? That was a different campaign, the wizard oh. tower, where God. you were three wizards fighting a... I mix everything up. Something. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the, uh, I don't know. There's wizard's towers everywhere. Um, what's chat saying? They... Uh, they're talking about um, in... Uh, do, 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 I honestly didn't think there was a city watch in Arwen's Rest either. I figured Hopkins and a few other... <laughs> Hopkins. <laughs> I figured Hopkins. <laughs> Grunkle's like, hey, do you know where the you know the, the Hobbs Lodge is? <laughs> and I was oh. like, this fucking guy. Dude, my my friends like you for some reason. Dude, Adarag and Nim were, were loving it. They, they bought it up. Dude, Frankie and Hopkins, they were like, we love you guys. Guys, we want to go fishing with you. And then Grunkle met him and he was like, Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm I'm a picky player. I think I, I was, yeah, I think Adarag still wants to learn like how to speak to Hopkins. There was at like, one point that he like got it and I looked at Adarag and I looked at him and they're like, oh! and then he went on and said something else, and Adarag completely messed it up. And he was like, No. <laughs> Um, I figured Learning. Hopkins and a few other able-bodied men would put on red tabards uh, when there's actual trouble. Had no idea there was a full-time watch. Yes, uh, Jonathan is head of the uh, watchman. And is it Ky Kyler? Kyler is the main hunt hunter cast. of the town, and they just kind of they call him the hunt captain. Uh, and he is captain of the guard, but there isn't really one. They just kind of promoted him to that because he's the best fighter. Yeah, and they're both regularly around each other. So those are the two that I, I like, associate with the, the they, law of the town. Basically, the people were just kind of, were like, you're the law, the lawman. They're like, I mean, okay. I see it more as, like, a, a Wild Wild West kind of scenario, where exactly. you have your sheriff and your deputy, and they keep shit in order. Basically, it's just two lawmen. Neither of them really claim to be any type of sheriff. They just, people put them in that position, so they're like, I mean, we're, we just want to protect the town. I mean, I'm pretty sure Kyler wears one of them wears a uh, raccoon hat. So yeah, yeah that's no, that's Hunt they, Captain they, Kyler. They get it. They're probably <laughs> sheriff. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Hunt Captain Kyler. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's the Hunt Captain, but the Davy Crockett of Arwen's Rest, basically. Well, yeah. the deputy, Davy Crockett. De deputy Croc. Deputy Crocky. <laughs> um so anyways uh any other discussions on uh, um how we start our writing process for our games i mean we put we pretty much put out our styles is uh i i had questions of like um i think it's interesting sorry i totally just cut no, you off no no go for it you sure yeah, no, go for okay. it. Okay. I just thought it was really interesting that, like, you had a different way of starting, but then you had a really interesting concept for how you write about, um, you start with, you know, a list of all your ideas, tying them together, but then your concept for how you write is an end goal, you know, getting towards that end goal and working backwards from it. I said, I do, you know, I start with a totally different way of starting, but for season one, I know season one is done when I hit that end goal. So there's things we the same on and things we were vastly different on um and then with the d's he had the same starting point as me um i can't remember did you really talk about do you have like a an i mean i'm assuming in a game where you're traveling from here to here your climactic end scene would be arriving there hopefully or you know whatever else happens yeah so i i have a couple of like midway sort of uh things but i, I think I think I've already started to like think about like how there could be more conflict in the world. Um, so right now it's really developing into more of a 
like I do have like a big daddy kind of like end scene in mind, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not, I don't think it, I'm not sure yet whether I want to uh, make that the actual end scene or oh. continue it on. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. your end scene. Well, okay. No, I'm going to sound like a stoner here. So when I exercise, I listen to music. It's music, oh, okay. man. <laughs> but when I'm exercising on my uh, uh, like cardio exercise machines, machine uh, singular, um, like I that's what I keeps coming up in my mind is like when I'm listening to fast paced music of like you know an easy one that I don't listen to very often. But Imagine Dragons, they've got very like stadium music and like uh, it's the 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 epic kind of music ish. I don't know. They're um, they're on my workout playlist too. Yeah, yep. so you get what I mean, like that that kind of vibe. As I start imagining that scene and different options that the players could take and different different uh moves, uh, but th that that's what comes moves up. Moves so they if, make, and every yeah, breath they take. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. They'll be <laughs> watching so you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but <laughs> if if the idea keeps popping up in your mind, is the point I'm trying to make. Then that's something that you're passionate about. If it keeps coming up as something you want to experience, you want to have players go through, I think that's where you have that passionate, like, climactic storytelling element. Um, and mm -hmm. working out is one way to get that, but um, I'm sure there are other ways. Um, and yeah, um, chase, chase your passion, guys. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be memes. Make them into a story. It, it can't suck as <laughs> bad as my writing i mean strange shine golden ridge blew up season three i feel yeah. like season three strange shine golden ridge started getting pretty popular oh well things are starting to get from from production and uh from my viewpoint of putting out shows i feel like strange shine golden ridge as of season three has started building a lot of popularity hell yeah oh yeah, yeah. Um, um can we end with um I, I really want to know about that last sip you took there, Adis. Uh, whiskey huh. sips is something we didn't do, and I saw you smell it and then drink it. <laughs> I, I see your rosy cheeks, so I know your your uh, instruments might be flawed. <laughs> but I want to know. I want to know specifically that sip. Um, <laughs> you what, just what, said what you, was, had, you had ED, bro. What was the flavor? <laughs> um, what was the smell? How did it feel? How does it feel at this point rather than at the beginning? I don't want to know anything about the beginning. Just tell me now at the end of the glass mm -hmm. if, if i can hijack your show sorry rath <laughs> <laughs> so uh right now at the end of this glendronic 15 revival um yeah. this i'm getting a lot of like cherry wood notes on the on the on the nose cherry and wood is cherry wood a sweet wood um, so have you ever like done like, like, have you ever smoked no. any or done any barbecue with, uh, oh. cherry wood? <laughs> That's no. going a totally different way than I thought it was. <laughs> you ever done any, I mean, you ever smoked any? And I was like, dude, I don't know if we can talk about have this. Have you smoked any blueberry kush? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, yo, you hear about no, to start talking about, about mushrooms? Like, like where's he going? <laughs> <Yeah. Ooh. laughs> Not that kind of yeah, podcast, yeah. bro. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely got a lot of heavy peat in it, so a lot of yeah. like smokiness. Um, but it's kind of accented with a bit of like a floral note, uh, and it's a very sweet floral note that I kind of characteristically like think of like a cherry cherry wood when it comes to that. But um, and then on the on the taste, yeah, give us a taste there. Yeah, you got to get it fresh on the palate. Gotta get it fresh on the palate. Mm -hmm. um, but it starts off at a very strong, um, uh, like, raisin sort of forward dark fruit note. And then it oh. tapers off into kind of a uh, a bit of a, like, an oaky sort of tanniny sort of note to it. Which, it can be good, can be bad, but this one, I think, does it right. It, it's got a, just a very bright note to it. And then, uh, it, and then as it kind of goes down the throat, goes off and starts to wane off the palate, it kind of brings back that smokiness again, um, which is a bit more complex than you would get in like the 12-year Glendronic, uh, which is their just Glendronic original. Um, 
because that one has a lot of the same uh, aspects, but it doesn't linger as long. It doesn't hold its, uh, it doesn't like transform as much over time. Could you imagine us us being sponsored by like whiskey and bourbon companies and whatever, and like we, they oh, send each of us a bottle and like we get a promotional code that we can put out and we just talk about the. I wish, you know. dude. <laughs> yeah, drinks and discussions, I, I even... man. It's the perfect podcast for it. We could actually mm -hmm. like get a setup where we could all be sitting around like having, you know, like there's a a roaring fire. Like I would totally do a podcast. It, well, I'm not gonna live here anymore, but on a patio where you've got a campfire and everyone's sitting around the campfire. You've all got you know cigars <laughs> and bourbon. You get to have like a a whiskey tasting while you talk about the podcast and talk about you know. RPGs I would make and stuff. that work. Dude, yeah, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yep. God, the thing. Yep. I have ideas. That's the that's the shitty thing, man. <laughs> I was talking with somebody about this. I can't remember. It might have been Johnny Speed, but man, it's just when you have like all this creativity and all these ideas and stuff, you can't make it happen because you just don't have the opportunities. And mm -hmm. it just sucks. Yep. It would be a really cool thing. Someone out there should do it. I will give you this one free. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that's the problem is I ran into the same situation when I was trying to do a podcast, mm -hmm. like on my own, I could just do it. And obviously you could just sit there at a like, like a fireside with your whiskey and drink whiskey by yourself, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. It, not the same. It, like I finished my first podcast and I was like, there's something missing from this. I'm not good enough to just be the, the person. Um, anyways, I released it anyway it's it's nonsense anyways but uh like yeah you need other people for that um you need the conversation of different ideologies and i think this like drinks and discussions fits that appropriately in that we're all bringing different perspectives of how we write just in this episode um and like i i would have never had the idea of how you guys write unless you told me and and i don't know um it's very enlightening to hear other people's perspectives, and I feel like whiskey could be another thing that would be appropriate for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like you're just sitting around getting drunk and, like, pounding. You just... I mean, I would, but you guys wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we would teach you how. <laughs> well, you know, Adis I, would teach us how. We would teach you I'd the keep ways. on learning. <laughs> I bet you, if we started... If we actually had a show like that, like a real show like that, I bet you Tough Nuts would be in that show, too. Oh, Tough Nuts would be on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like, oh, we, we, I don't know why he doesn't show up for it now. It's basically the same thing, just not nearly as cool or awesome or have anything that we want, but the idea is there. But with that, that's good. We need the what? Spartans? We need to spark him back into his imaginative state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him back. Um, with that, that's going to wrap this one up. This has been Drinks and Discussions, the RPG podcast featuring uh, Mr. Pickles and Adis Voight Actors. Voight I'm a Voight Actor. Do a good job, Mr. Gargoyle. Damn it. Sorry, Rath. Uh, um, voice actors from shows like King's Crossing, Strange Town, Golden Ridge, and The Dirty Journey. A uh, huge shout out to them. Thank you guys for joining. A uh, huge shout out to chat. We do stream these live over on twitch.tv slash daddyrath underscore. Um, we all have also back to streaming this on YouTube. So huge shout out to the YouTube chat for being here today. That's just at daddyrath on YouTube. You can find all my content there. Things like Return to Moya featuring Adise or Raft featuring Adise and Mr. Pickles. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. You can also find all the uh, TTRPGs that we've discussed and kind of made inside jokes about here on the channel or here on the podcast. You can find all those on that channel as well. Um, we are going to be streaming on kick.com slash daddyrath as well. Uh, it's in the process of getting set up and getting brought back. So that'll be coming soon. But um, that's all I got. That's all I got for you guys. Go check out the Arc Ascended series. That's a brand new series that's dropping this week on YouTube. We are streaming it live. There are people on the channel like Adis, Tough Nuts, Camo Kitty, Nick Rizzi, I think is their name. I can't remember. And more. Uh, Shifty Games and his crew, they're bringing over a whole bunch of people that are going to be jumping on there as well. We've got more people. Johnny Speed, a huge commuter. Commuter. He doesn't commute. Uh, a huge contributor of the con community uh, is bringing a bunch of people over and shouting at the channel and bringing people in as well. So huge shout out to you, Johnny Speed. You're awesome. 
stay you and cool. Um, that's all I got. Thank you guys for joining. We will see you in the next one. Later. I love Cheers. you.